Welcome again and now the details. The President of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Paul Kagame, has completed his two-day working visit to Tanzania. Political and foreign affairs analysts have noted that the visit of the head of state to Tanzania is a good opportunity, was, pardon me, a good opportunity to strengthen good relations between both countries that have been in place for a while now. Jessica Gasaro with the details. On this Friday, the President of the Republic, Paul Kagame, ended his two-day visit to Tanzania. President Kagame told his Tanzanian counterpart that Tanzania is an important partner for Rwanda. The President of Tanzania, Samia Suluhu Hassan, also emphasized that the good cooperation between the two countries should be expanded further. Experienced in international politics, Abdul Kalim Haredimana states that the relationship between Rwanda and Tanzania has roots in a long history and is beneficial to both countries. It's a relationship that has been going on for a long time, and there is a political will between the heads of two countries, President Paul Kagame and Samia Sulu Hassan. This relationship has many benefits. First, we are very close, we have a border. The second is our route because we use the port of Dazlan. It's the route we use for importation and exportation. So you understand that we need each other very much in the, in the economic sphere. According to political analyst Alex Nizeimana, the good relations between Rwanda and Tanzania includes many benefits for both sides. This relationship is based on politics. The agreement between the countries is strong. It immediately goes from politics to the economy voice. In the lives of the residents, when the countries live well and our neighbors, it's a voice that increases at the international level. If Rwanda has a problem when it goes to debate, even if it's at the international level, they are not looking at one country. Instead, they see that there is more than one country that has changed many things. On the other hand, security between the two countries is an issue that political analysts declares is a common issue between the two countries. And the other thing is about security. I understand what they discussed is also included because if one of our countries is not safe, the other country would also be affected in one way or another. Another thing that people remember is that Samia Suruhu is one of the people who say that the problem of Congo concerned only Congolese when other countries were blaming Rwanda. Having a neighbor like that who can speak the truth and tell the truth to others is a great thing. Therefore, the security of Rwandans, whether it is those who are badly about it or those who want to change it from outside, Tanzania has always stood to its ground and speaks the truth. In August of 20 in 2021, the president of Tanzania, Samia Sulu Hassan, paid a two-day working visit to Rwanda at that time, and the two countries signed cooperation agreement in various sectors like economy, education, and others. Jessica Gasaro, RTV News. As Rwanda prepares for the presidential and parliamentary elections next year, that's 2024, the National Electoral Commission has continued with preparations to ensure that the elections will be coordinated and run smoothly. Olive Nete with more. In order to revise various articles and also various activities that are going to be carried out in preparation of the upcoming presidential and parliamentary elections planned in 2024, the National Electoral Commission and commissioners are working together for the betterment of the synchronized elections. There are various things that have been changed and which will also continue to change. We have to revise it so that we can be updated and gather information on what we need to prepare so that we can see how to include it in our daily activities as people who are always on the field so that we can make our contribution in all those activities. We looked at the activities that are to be carried out during the campaign, meaning the civic education. We also looked at various programs that we will speak to residents about before giving out the laws that will govern the synchronized elections. And we also got some information from the retreat that we will share with them. The chairperson of the National Electoral Commission, Honorable Odaga Sinzigwa, explains the lessons learned during the retreat that will be of importance in the upcoming elections due to 2024. 
komisiyo y'igihugu y'amatora ikorana n'inzego zitandukanye mu rwego rwo kugira ngo koko we advised various points, be it legal reforms, and also following upon its implementation. But let me note that there are some of the activities that we carry out and those that are carried out by other institutions. Secondly, it is about civic education. We have a long program on how we'll make sure that Rwandans get to know about it. Another step is about technology. It is also something big that we are currently building. The National Electoral Commission points out that the synchronization of presidential and parliamentary elections will assist the country to save up to 7 billion Rwandan francs. Meanwhile, the Parliament of Rwanda is revising some articles in the national constitution, mainly regarding the synchronized elections. Olive Nete, or TV News. The Ministry of National Unity and Civic Engagement has announced that in partnership with various stakeholders, there is an ongoing project of digitalizing the history of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in a virtual reality form. Uh, Prince Manzi with the details. This program will help in preservation of the history of the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in an advanced way and also in increasing awareness of this history among the youth, especially those born after this tragedy, a move appreciated by young people. Technology drives the world, so this will be a major weapon in fighting genocide denial. It will help us in explaining the history to next generations, especially the history of the genocide against the Tutsi. This is also emphasized by Sandrino Motoni, the Director General of Imbuto Foundation, one of the partners of this project, where she demonstrates that digitalizing the history helps in its preservation. You have to digitalize one because you do not want to lose it. Currently, the, the history of Rwanda is still highly uh, present in the memory of people. Uh, it's still very present in people who were here uh, before the genocide was perpetrated, people who fled uh, because of what happened in this country. And we are noticing that the new generations of Rwanda do not have access to this information. So we are saying let's make this digital because what is saved on a digital platform will last forever. And then what is saved on a digital platform is also accessible to people around the world. This program will commence with three genocide against the Tutsi memorials, the Nyanje, Narama and Murambi memorials, as explained by the Minister of National Unity and Civic Engagement, Dr. Jean Thomasen Vizimana. Nyanje Memorial is built in a region where a parish was destroyed completely with people inside under the command of the priest. And an international trial was also conducted and set as passed at that location, which is something big. At Narama, also there were massacred a lot of Tutsi at the same time in a parish, and Murambi demonstrates the role of the international community as it is built in the zone Tirkwaz. We started with those three, and these are some of the reasons we chose them. We will also add other memorials. Apart from the genocide against the Tutsi memorials, this project will also tackle on other areas holding essential Rwandan history. Prince Manzi, RTV News. Now, during a commemoration event to remember and honor former CND employees, the President of the Senate urged members of the parliament of both chambers to be at the forefront in fighting bad politics since the main reason for the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994 was exactly that. Adam Squizera with more. In a dialogue which was delivered by the Minister of National Unity and Civic Engagement, Dr. Visman Shandamasen pointed out that since 1959, the bad regime continued to promote hatred among the people, which was often followed by the killings of Tutsi for many years later. He gave the example of President Grigar Kaivanda, himself who started the massacre of Tutsi in the 1960s in the Congo prefecture, and gave orders to continue the process in other prefectures, especially those near the borders, whereas he also reiterated on the example of the President Todos in the Kugabo in April 1994, where he encouraged the killings of Tutsi in Wutarian di Kongoro. Minister Vizimana noted that this was the sign of the government that supported the plan of genocide. 
By that time, residents themselves were the one who committed genocide in Chahinda. But Sindhi Kugavo was not satisfied enough because in other parts of Butare, they were not yet started the killings. By that time, his speech was aired on Radio Rwanda, where he began appreciating them on the killings they did in Chahinda, promising them to send the supporting team and reward his work as they did in 1959. Then, after living in Nyachizu, he had a meeting with Simbari Kure, same to the meeting he did in Utare. That's why Major Habjarabatuma Siyak sent the arms to practice the killings in Dishamfu and other remaining places. In the commemoration of the former CND employees, which was like today's parliament, the Speaker of the Chamber of Deputies, Donate Mukabadisa, emphasized that today's politicians should be characterized by their right choices. This shows us that the safety and development of the country comes as a result of the good choices of the government. We must cherish that we made the right choices of building our country together. We must also cherish that we have the good government that wishes the best for the residents. The representatives of the genocide survivors and families of those who worked in CND said that they are still saddened by the fact that some of those who were killed have not yet been found hence to be buried in honor. The president of the Senate, Francois Xavier Kalinda, reminded the politicians to fight against bad politics, which led to the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. <laughs> It's sad to see such decision-making authority did nothing to what was in its mandate. That's why we have a great role through our responsibilities, the role of eradicating away the genocide ideology and discrimination. But by prioritizing the unity of Rwandans and putting the right way of promoting equal opportunities in their daily activities without any exclusion. The employees of the Supreme Court also commemorated former employees who were killed during the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994. It was an event that was preceded by laying wreaths on the graves of the victims of the genocide against Tutsi at the Sozi Memorial Center. The president of the Supreme Court, Dr. Foster Nizidiayo, asked those in judicially to work in a different way than some of those who did this work during the genocide and participated in it. Dushira mu bikorwa ingamba twafashe kandi tugasuzuma Day to day, we should implement the strategies that we took and also check that no one neglected them due to the complacency of wanting to use shortcuts that are contrary to the law. When there is someone violating laws, he or she gets punished. This is included in the program our country took of eradicating away the impunity culture. <laughs> The Rwanda Parliament and the Supreme Court are the two institutions that both take a role to statute and implement laws where their workers were asked to work professionally. Adam Squizera, RTV News. On Friday, BK Group PLC and the Rwanda Social Security Board commemorated their employees who were killed during the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi. The families of the former employees expressed their appreciation that the two institutions have continued to assist them in many ways over the years. Olive Nete with more. The relatives of the former employees of the Rwanda Social Security Board and those of the Bank of Kigali that survived the genocide against the Tutsi reiterate on how their parents were dear to them. They say that after surviving, they had no hope of living. They appreciate the institutions that their families worked for that helped them in various ways. A parent who sent all his children to the battlefield and all of them died. If a parent came back to Rwanda, did I visit them? or help them in any way possible. That's a responsibility we should think about when we commemorate. He didn't tell us anything, but he was always worried about our studies, how we'll succeed and everything, because the four of us were in secondary school back then. God did great works, and we are content of the fact that we survived and rebuilt ourselves. I'm a mother, and all of my siblings are now grown-ups. I thank God that we were able to achieve what our father wanted. The chief executive officer of the BK Group PLC, Beata Habjarimana, 
comforted the families that lost their loved ones and also emphasized that the bank of kigali carries a history that should be written so that young people will know about it she also urged the current employees of this bank to be united and to fight the genocide ideology the history told of what happened in the bank of kigali should not be forgotten we urge you to please help us so that it can be written for those that will work in bika after us would know the history so that we can prevent the genocide from happening again. When we say that it should never happen again, we also have a contribution to make to ensure that we prevent the genocide and its ideology. Martin Rujeni, the vice mayor in charge of social economic affairs in the city of Kigali, reiterated on the discrimination and divisions that characterized Rwandans due to bad governance and also appreciated the current national unity government that stopped the genocide and inequality among Rwandans. We thank the leadership of our country that eradicated that kind of ideology that destroys. The reason why it was possible and put in place is thanks to the good governance that values every Rwandan, emphasizing that there is no Hutu or Tutsi, that instead we are all Rwandans through the good program of Dumunyarwand. The Bank of Kigali had over 300 employees before the genocide against the Tutsi. On the genocide memorial plaque at the head office of the Bank of Kigali, there are 15 names of the former BK employees who were killed during the genocide against the Tutsi. Olive Nete, RTV News. While visiting the Kigali Genocide Memorial on Friday, the employees of Netik, many of whom are young people, were told of the history that marked the genocide against the Tutsi in 1994, and they vowed to learn from that history so that they can build up, continue building up a country free of discrimination. Adam Squizera with more. Employees of the company that manufactures technological equipment in Rwanda, Netik, visited Kigali Genocide Memorial, where they laid wreaths on the graves of the victims of the 1994 genocide against Tutsi, where their employees decided to learn from the history hence to build a country free of discrimination. As a youth, my role is to cooperate together with, with my fellow youth to fight against genocide ideology by using the social medias in promoting our country, as our government always emphasized this. The director of this company noted that they organized this trip in order to learn the history of Rwanda and to know the role of the companies and institutions that were there at that time, thus helping them to not engage in activities like what they did in 1994. Our role is in the collaboration with our leaders, hence developing ourselves and building our country, as the theme says that we should remember and renew. The Kiga Genocide Memorial is the final resting place for more than 250,000 victims of the 1994 genocide against Tutsi. Adam Squizera, RTV News. Now to other matters, Rwandans and foreigners alive, alike living here in Rwanda have continued to express their gratitude and appreciation for the good security in the country. This has millions of Rwandan francs continue to be returned to their rightful owners after being recovered by investigation authorities. We have the details with Betty Mutoni. Nampija Polini and Nizeimana Kalist are so pleased by how the security organs provide quick assistance in case of any threat to people and their properties. It happened to me when we were still walking from down there. We found thieves waiting for us. There is really help because I am one of the people who were rescued that time. It was one time Yai was attacked, but we reported immediately as possible some years back, and all those people were arrested, and all whatever he was having was brought back to me. So me, I salute the security people, and I always salute them, even the government at large, because as you told me, it's very few cases or some few countries whereby you can say that those things can do. Sometimes you can 
tell the uh, security organs, maybe they get those things and they stay with those things. They can't give them to the person who lost the things. But I, for one, I was attacked when I was going back home and uh, had the person I was with was, uh, was shot and uh, we were very, very much hoped. On Friday, Mukakawira Maria from Gasaba district was given back her money of more than 5 million with the help of running investigation below, which was stolen last Saturday by her house helper together with the brother. She explains what happened. This thief told me on Saturday when I was in my garden taking care of my flowers, knowing that I love flowers so much. He knew I would spend much time there. He took the money and kept it somewhere else. Then he later came back to work on Monday as if nothing happened. The stolen money included Dora, pounds, euros, and Ronan francs. Mukakavira Mariam appreciates the effort of the security organs in helping people to recover their stolen properties. I feel so much joy the way I'm talking because last few days this is not the way I was talking. I was so worried. I couldn't sleep. Too much thinking because they had stolen a lot of money. I thank Rwanda Investigation Bureau for the work well done. I'm leaving testimony. I went crying to them with no hope of getting my money back. I pray to God as anyone can be during the hardships. God did it, but also people of RIB did a good job. We have duty for Rwanda. I thank RIB administration and the whole team for this operation that helped me to recover my money, which I'm happy for and I thank God. Run Investigation Bureau encourages the public to be more careful and responsible for their own safety and to make sure that their money is kept in safe places like banks, as it is explained by RIB spokesperson Dr. Murangira Tsieri. Whoever with that kind of heart, thinking he can live by stealing, we would advise you to stop or any laws will be followed. And Rwandans at large, let us avoid carrying money in our hands. Let us use cashless, because carrying cash may cause risks of losing it. The two young men involved in this theft of Rwandan francs 5 million are now under arrest at the police station in Remera. Betty Mutoni, RTV News. As always, it's always a pleasure when you're able to join us here on Wanda Television. Do stay with us, and I hope you have a great weekend ahead of you.